All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the series. In the previous episode, we got uh, collisions working between our walls and our player, and it works fairly well. So this is what our shooter game looks like right now. In today's episode, we're going to be making enemies, and we're going to be adding bullet collisions. So the bullets are going to actually disappear when they hit the walls, and they're going to be able to hit enemies and damage them. So that's going to be pretty cool. First thing we're going to do is just make an enemy sprite. I'm just going to duplicate our player sprite. Or sprite enemy. And we can just use this. Um, we're just going to paint bucket it. Why not? It can be red. Red is a very enemy color. Actually, we're going to do orange. Because I want to do, uh, <laughs> I want to do blood splats at some point. So we'll do orange for our enemy, and we'll also be creating an object for en for our enemy. We'll call it object enemy, and we can give him our sprite. We won't worry too much about the hitboxes and stuff for now. We'll just use the de default whatever it's giving us the rectangle hitbox. That's fine. We can fix that up later. And this is our enemy. So the way we're going to be doing this is going to be a little bit different um, to how most sane humans would probably do this. But it is going to be quite a cool method. This is generally how I do my coding in Game Maker. Um, you're going to get a little bit of a stick brain experience <laughs> about now. So we're going to actually make a, a parent object, much like we did the wall. But this one's going to be parent bullet collision. And what this is, is this is going to be apparent that any object that has collision with bullets, whether it's an enemy or a wall or whatever, will have this parent. So it will be, okay. So for example, parent wall, we can give that parent a parent, which will be parent bullet collision. And we can go into object enemy and we'll also give object enemy um, we could do another pair. For now, we'll do it like this. We'll do this one as well. Parent bullet collision. We could add an extra layer for if we have multiple different enemy types. But we'll do it. We'll do it like this for now. We'll just go straight into parent bullet collision. Now, inside the parent bullet collision, this is where the magic is going to happen. We're going to create a function inside here. So this will be the first function we create in this series. Um, to create a function, there's a couple ways you can do it. One way is to write function, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll like write it like this, where this will be the name of the function. Any arguments for the function will go in here. And this will be the code for the function. So a function, if you don't know, is just a piece of code that we can run at any time. So we can call the function, much like these inbuilt functions that we have, such as like point direction, point distance, these are inbuilt game maker functions that we can run at any time. Uh, in our own objects, we can create our own functions and we can run these at any time. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is not that scribble. You can actually assign a function to a variable um, as a way of, it's sort of a way of naming it, but it means we can dynamically change the function and we can change uh, what the variable, what function the variable references. So I'll share what that looks like. So our bullet collision will have a function. I'm just going to call it f underscore um, hit. Yeah, let's just call it f underscore hit. That's fine. That will do. And you don't do it like this. You do equals function. So this here will create a function. And it will store that function in this variable f underscore hit, meaning we can call the function by calling f underscore hit, uh, if that makes any sense. And you'll see what that looks like in just a second, if that's confusing for you. And you're not 100% sure what we're doing here. Um, and inside this function, we're going to, let's just leave it like this for now. We will call, um, just so you can see what it kind of does, we can do a show debug message. And show debug message just writes a message in the console down here. 
and we'll just put here hit by bullet. So now we have this function that can get called. All it does is just writes a message that's been hit by a bullet and we can call this. I'll show you how we call this. We go to our bullet, we will add a collision in here, add event, collision event, a collision event with the parent bullet collision. And so when we, when our bullet collides with something that has this parent, parent bullet collision, then we are going to call the function, uh, we're going to say, what are we going to say? Other. So in a collision function, uh, there's this variable other, and this other refers to whatever is getting collided with. So if we wanted to reference our bullet, we would say ID. That would reference the ID of this bullet. Other references the ID of the parent bullet collision that we're colliding with. And then we can call a function by doing dot and then the function name. So it'll be underscore F hit. So now when we collide with a with a with something with a bullet collision parent, we're going to... Um, we, we grab the ID of that object and we call this f hit function, which should um, call this function here. So we'll just test it out. Since we already gave um, parent bullet collision to the enemy and to the wall, we should have it written in the console when I shoot the wall. So you can see when I hit the wall, I don't know if you guys can see down here. When I shoot the wall, it... Uh, yeah, it prints a whole bunch of messages. Every frame that it's impacting the wall, it will print the hit by bullet message. And if I added an enemy, it would do the same thing. Now that's all cool, but we need to have a resolution for the collision. And we need to make it do something other than just say that we got hit by a bullet. Um, I'll also add to the room a couple enemies. So we'll just drag a couple of these enemies in. Delete that really quick couple enemies in the room we can shoot at and what we can do is and you'll see in a moment why it's really useful to do this parent system and to have a function like this and that is because we are declaring the the function f hit here or declaring the variable f hit here but we can actually declare it again inside say the object enemy and what this means is that f hit, it will, instead of doing this f hit, we have a new create function in our enemy. And that create function, it probably says here, it overrides this, this create function. Which means that this code isn't actually getting ran inside our object enemy, and this code is. And what that means is, it's just really, really easy for us to add things that can interact with bullets and we can easily edit how the bullet interacts with our um, like say for example hitting the enemy we're going to pass a couple things into the function as well and I'll, I'll keep this show debug message but I'll say no default behavior Default hit by bullet. We'll just write something like that. And that just means that we haven't actually declared that anything will happen. So it's running this. So if we ever see this in our, in our um, game, it means that whatever's getting hit by the bullet doesn't have this function set up. So it's a default behavior. Now, we're going to also, in, we have to do it for both of these functions. We're going to set, we're going to give the bullet ID and we'll also give a damage number. The damage number being how much damage, um, like for example, the, the enemy will take. And then we can copy that here. And what we can do is, we can also, for the object enemy, we can give it a HP. So that we can give maybe like 10 health to start off with. So our enemy here has 10 HP. And when we get hit by the bullet, we want it to, we don't even have to write this, we won't show the debug for it, but we'll write, um, we can do HP, 
minus equals damage like this. I also I put an underscore in front of these variables because it's a function argument. You don't have to do that. You can name these what you want. I just do it like this. This is just an easy way to know what um, variables are ones that are to do with my object and which ones are to do with arguments that are getting passed in and that sort of thing. So I always do the underscores for functions. You don't have to do that. I just saw someone do that and I thought it was a good idea. So, <laughs> so I, have, I have copied that one. It's a good habit. Um, yeah, and also because like, for example, things like ID, you can't just name a variable ID because, I mean, it's already an inbuilt variable. So having the underscore just, it just ensures as well that I can actually use um, variables that already have declarations, I guess. All right, so. Um, okay, so HP minus equals damage. And we can also do, for example, if HP is smaller than or equal to zero, then we run instance destroy. So that means that we will kill the enemy if um, it runs out of health. So when it gets hit by a bullet, it loses damage worth of health. So the damage will come from our bullets, which you'll see in a second. And if we run out of health, it destroys itself. So if it runs out of health, the enemy dies, basically. Later on, we can change here. Um, we can make a new function here for death. Uh, we will be adding in this tutorial, like, blood splatters and all kinds of crazy stuff. To be honest, i got a few different plans for what we'll add. But we'll add all kinds of crazy stuff. It'll be really good. But for now, we're just going to destroy the instance. So it'll just disappear. Also, we can do, for example... Um, we can just destroy the bullet as well. We could make it so that if the enemy dies, the bullet just travels through. So like has piercing or it just always travels through in general. Depends what you want in your game. We can also make it so different weapons have like a, a different piercing effect and we'd be able to pass an argument in that would be like piercing or something like that. Um, but for now, we're just going to do damage and ID. The ID being the bullet ID. And we'll just make the bullet disappear when it hits the enemy. Like probably the most simple behavior you can have. Now that we've got this, we'll go back to our bullet, and you'll see we've got an error because our, our function isn't actually passing any arguments. We're going to pass the ID, and we're also going to pass damage. Damage is going to be a new variable we declare for our bullet. So I'm doing it in the create function, damage, the create event, I should say. Damage can equal 5. All right, so, <laughs> so here you can see damage equals 5. If, what's this feather? I don't know why it's a feather there. Ignore that. Damage equals five. I think that's a debugging thing. And when we collide with one of the parent bullet collisions, we are running the hit function in whatever that object is. So if it hits the enemy, it's going to run the hit function in that enemy. It's going to pass it the ID for the bullet, and it's going to pass it the damage. That enemy is going to take the damage that the bullet has. The good thing about this is that we can have different bullets with different damage. If we wanted like random chance, we can also have like different weapons have different bullets that have different damage, that sort of thing. Um, we can also, you can do all kinds of, you can do all kinds of things. Maybe we want, so direct hits do more damage. And if it kind of skims them, it doesn't do as much damage. You know, you can do whatever you want really. But this is like a really good framework to, to get that done. Um, if we have less than zero HP, we die. And this is actually a mistake. This is supposed to pass in the ID. So this destroys the bullet. So I'll write that. So with the instance destroy function, it destroys the instance, um, which would be the enemy that's calling this in, in this in this circumstance. But you can also pass in a variable, um, and that would be an ID to destroy. So if you don't pass in a variable, it destroys itself. If you pass in a, in, an, in an ID it will destroy whatever that ID is. So in this case, the ID we're passing in is the bullet's ID. And so we can destroy the bullet. So if we do this, this should work. Have a quick little... I'm getting a little bit... I'm getting a little bit... Uh, getting a little bit hyper. But you can see if we shoot here, it's not going to do anything right now, the wall. It's coming up with default hit by bullets. But this is a good, good example of um, using the parent system where because we haven't given a function to this wall yet, it's just going to use the. It's just going to have the default message. If we shoot the enemy, though, you'll see the bullet disappears. It gets destroyed, 
And if I shoot him again, so he would he has 10 health, he would have taken 5 damage, got 5 health left. Shoot him again, he disappears, he died, he's got 0 health. So that's working all dandy, pretty good actually. Um, so we'll add a hit function maybe to the wall. So we can do, hmm, let's take a look. Object wall. Let's give it a function. I'll probably, um, in a future episode, we can add a few different types of objects as well. So, for example, we can have objects where, like, walls that you can collide with, but you can shoot over. So, like, imagine, like, a desk in a, in a top-down shooter. Um, we can, like, I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that, and I'll also show you guys how to do something like, maybe, like, a window that you can shoot through. Which could be, you know, maybe you, can't, maybe you can't move through it, but then you shoot it and the window smashes and now you can move through it. Stuff like that is like pretty easy to set up with a system like this. Might need a couple little tweaks on how we're doing the parenting, but it will be pretty much exactly the same as what we got. Um, Alright, so we add the wall, and then when you shoot the wall, we can just destroy the bullet. That should be all good. Instant destroy AD. That, it's that easy. It's that easy to destroy the bullet. And we'll take a look. BEA beautiful. We can see the bullet gets destroyed beneath the wall. And when you hit a enemy, it takes damage. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff you can do as well with, um, for example, if you look at the bullet, it kind of just gets deleted at a, at a random distance. Uh, you can probably see a gap between the bullet and the wall if I'm shooting at the correct spots. Um, we can do later on, I'm going to be doing an effect where, again, I said blood splats and stuff, but we can have like different effects for different uh, things is another thing that's really cool about this parenting system. So when I shoot a wall, you can have like a spark fly out. And if I shoot an enemy, I can have like a blood splatter come out. So that's really, really cool. All right. I think we will actually end this episode. To be honest, this is all I had planned for this episode. It was a little bit shorter than I expected. But hopefully you guys learnt a little bit. And yeah, in the next episode... I actually am not sure I have it written down what the next episode is going to be. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can do. We can add some enemy AI. Could be good. Um, make the enemies shoot back at you. Uh, we could, I'm not sure actually, we'll, <laughs> you'll be able to see the next episode title, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode, to be honest, I haven't 100% planned it through, i got a whole bunch of different things we're going to do in the series, um, but yeah, the next episode will be an exciting one, I'm sure, and I'll see you guys there, so thanks for watching.